Robert Lee Yates was born on the 27th of May 1952. He grew up in the middle class area of Oak Harbour in Washington. His family were religious and attended the local church regularly. Although avid churchgoers, his family were no strangers to trouble. His grandmother had murdered her husband with an axe long before Yates was even born. When he was young, Yates attended Oak Harbour High School, where he graduated in 1970. In 1972, aged just 20, he met and married a lady by the name of Nylander. But this marriage did not last long and she filed for divorce in May of 1974. The very next month, another marriage license was applied for by Yates, but this time for a woman by the name of Linda Brewer. The couple then married in July of the same year. By 1975, he got a job at the Washington State Department of Corrections as a correction officer and was placed at the Washington State Penitentiary in Walla Walla. He was not happy in his work here and soon signed up to join the United States Army. Yates was happy here and had a long and prosperous career. He served proudly as a nation's peacekeeper in the 90s in places such as Germany and Somalia, gaining himself many achievement medals and commendation medals. In the mid 90s, the army were beginning to make lots of redundancies and Yates saw this as his way out. He was only 18 months short of the statutory 20 year service to get retired on a full pension. But due to the redundancies, the army awarded this anyway and the fact that Yates had an exceptional service record. And he finished his long serving time in the army in 1996. He did after this, however, take a job in the National Guard for a few years until the year 2000, when he was shockingly charged with first degree murder. The police had arrested Yates for a multiple of first degree murders of local prostitutes who had all been murdered in Spokane and most of them had been known to have worked in the notorious Skid Row area between the years of 1996 and 1998. Although his span of crimes went back even further than that to the 1970s and may have even been active in another country. Yates would pick up women who were prostitutes in the area and were perusing for business. He would agree his price for the business that was agreed. Then, in usual fashion, they would get into his Ford van or white Corvette car, where he would take them to different locations and kill them using his trusty Raven handgun. His usual MO, which was shooting them in the head, then dumping their limp bodies in areas of greenery to stop them being discovered quickly by the authorities. Bizarrely, one of his victims was found buried in his own back garden, surrounded by flowers after a search was performed at his home after his arrest. In 1998, Yates was close to being captured by Spokane police. He was brought in for questioning over the 1st of August shooting and wounding of a lady called Christine Smith. He was brought into the station in mid-September 1998 and was asked to provide a DNA sample, which was the usual protocol for a person arrested or even just being questioned for such a crime. Yates refused this, stating it seemed over the top to ask an ex-army sergeant and family man to perform such a thing. He was then released with no charge. Yates was then also arrested in January 1999 for striking his daughter, but was told that he would not face charges if he didn't do anything similar for the next two years. A probation type deal. The deal was accepted and again Yates went on his way to normal life. The police unaware that they had a serial killer in their station. 
Then again, on the 18th of April 2000, Yates was subject to another arrest. This was for the murder of a lady by the name of Jennifer Joseph. A search warrant was executed for his white Corvette that Yates was known to drive. Forensic searching was performed and blood particles were found in the car. The DNA was sent off for testing and it had a hit on the database and shockingly linked Yates to 12 further victims. He was now a known serial killer. When these details were being put through the system, it was pulled up that Yates had previously been stopped in that very same car as the police were hunting it. But as the officer who stopped him recorded the car as a Camaro, he was let on his way. Yates was now in the frame for 13 counts of first-degree murder. His only way to avoid the subsequent death penalty was to strike a plea deal. In exchange for his full confession and details of all of the 13 murders and each of the victims, he would get a life sentence rather than the death penalty. This plea was agreed and that is what Yates did. He told the police about picking up prostitutes in the Skid Row area, taking them to a quiet area and using his gun to callously end their young lives. The details of the victims were for Connie Ellis, whose body was discovered on the 13th of October, 1998. Then Micheline Dernin in early July, 98. Melody Murphy in May, she was the victim that had been buried in Yates' garden under his wife and children's nose for all of that time without them suspecting a thing. Linda and Sonny also found in 98. Then in 1997, the bodies of Laurie, Sean McLennan and Sean Johnson, Melinda, Darla, Jennifer and Heather. And the first two victims of this two-year serial killer's crime spree was Shannon, whose body was discovered in June 96. All of these families now had closure about what had happened to them, and the man who was responsible was finally in police custody. This was said to be one of the worst serial killers at the time in Washington. Yates preyed on vulnerable women who were trying to earn a living. At first, this serial killer was careful. He murdered his victims a long way from where they were taken and tried to cover their bodies so they could not be found easily. But as the victim count got higher and he was literally getting away with murder, he started to leave the bodies not far from when they were taken and he left them in full sight to be found soon after their murder. Due to his guilty plea, his trial was not long, as the jury did not have to determine whether he was guilty of murder. They just had to come up with the sentence he deserved. And as the death penalty was not an option due to the plea deal he made, the married father of five was given 408 years of prison time in Spokane County Jail. At last, this heinous serial killer would be behind bars for the rest of his life. But that was not all. In 2002, Yates faced further charges. His murders had crossed into Pierce County and due to the fact that they did not agree to the plea for the victims that had been found in their jurisdiction, Yates faced two further first degree murder charges and was on the 4th of October, was sentenced to the death penalty. Another twist to this already shocking case. A review was made on a 1975 case where a courting couple were in a field having a picnic at Mill Creek when they were brutally shot from a distance, like target practice. The victims, Patrick, who was shot in the head three times, and Susan, who was shot twice. It was put to Yates that he in fact was the killer of Patrick Oliver and Susan Savage. Yates admitted that it was him 
and that he was responsible for these murders. And he stated that they were in fact his first ever victims. A crime spree that now had been active for decades. Another two first degree murder charges added to his list. Then another case was brought to light. This was of Stacy Elizabeth Horn, originally from Seattle. She was a 23 year old prostitute who got into Yates' car to do business when he drove her to Mount Vernon and murdered her. Her death was put down to the infamous Green River Killer. But due to the similarities in Yates' case, her name was put to him also. And shockingly, he admitted to the killing of this young woman. He was able to substantiate exactly where she was found and also the extent and location of her injuries. Yates' death count was now at 16. Currently serving time on death row for his part in a two decade crime spree, all had thought this case had finished. But an appeal was launched on behalf of Yates. He had made the complaint that the plea deal that he took should have been all encompassing and that the death penalty should not have been sought after the later admissions of guilt. But this was thrown out and the death penalty still remains. The appeal which was launched halted an execution date which was set for September 2008. After the extensive search on Yates' car and home, lots of blood samples had been collected, some of which were identified to belong to some of the victims named. But there are still some that are yet to be identified. So police fear that Yates' actual number of killings is much higher than he has been charged with. Since being held in jail, the German authorities have been in touch with the case handlers and have asked for a joint operation to help them solve 26 murders of young women in their country, all of which happened while Yates was serving in the army and based in Germany. Yates has still to this day refused to give a blood sample. He must know that this will lead to more victims to be revealed that belong to him. But currently, Robert Lee Yates is behind bars on death row, awaiting execution for the murders.